welcome. Today is Artist Choice Demo Day and I'm excited about today's demo because you selected number two. Well, actually number one actually was the true winner but if you've been following along on the Patreon page you'll know that I actually remember that I painted number one a couple of years ago for a Facebook Live demo. So I went ahead and I posted that video for you to see and so today I'm going to move on to choice number two so you can consider that other demo a bonus. Alright so now we're going to get two demos. Maybe I'll squeeze in a third one we'll see how it goes. So choice number two was the palm trees. Now before you say, hey, I don't want to paint palm trees. I don't have palm trees where I live. I'm not interested in palm trees. I just want to point out that palm trees are a collection of shapes and values and colors just like any other tree that we would paint. So by watching me paint a palm tree you might just get some tips that you can apply to your other trees that you want to paint. So I'm going to paint the palm trees for today's demo and uh, I also want to point out that I posted uh, also on the Patreon page some tips for painting palm trees. So you can go back and take a look at those tips and I'm going to share those tips as I paint. So rather than going over them right now, I'm going to just dive right into the demo. So every painting begins with a plan. So you want to take a few minutes to make a plan before you pick up a pastel. And one of the questions that someone asks, and this is a very good question, is um, how can I streamline the planning so that I don't have to take hours and I can just uh, get into the painting? And what I want to say to you all is that planning is important but it doesn't have to take hours. Now, when you're first starting painting and you're doing plans, yes, they will take longer because you're new to it. So you just have to learn the, the ropes on how to create a value study and how to pick out the right pastels. It is going to take you more time, but just know that with any other uh, discipline, the more you do it, the more efficient or faster you'll be at it. So if you've made a hundred plans, just think how quickly you'll be able to make the next one. So if you've only done two or three, of course they're going to take you longer. So my advice is to hang in there, keep planning, and it will get easier. But I do want to show you a little shortcut that I like to use. And this is, well, I'm going to just hold it up here. So that's, that way you can get a, a good look. This is just a dry erase board. Now I pick up, uh, usually the ones I use are from the Dollar Tree but I need to get some more. <clears throat> so I'm using this little white dry erase board and what I do is instead of trying to find paper or, or a sketchbook to do a thumbnail, I do my thumbnail right on the dry erase board and I begin by asking myself why? Why am I painting this scene? And uh, I'm going to show you my reference photo in just a minute but my why for the scene was the, the feeling of the gentle breezes, uh, tropical breezes in the palm trees. So I'm going to keep that in mind as I paint. And then I went ahead and I did a little thumbnail sketch. Now I'm going to put this back over here and this over here is my actual reference photo. So have a look at the reference photo and you can see there's a lot of excess information in the photo. There are palm frond leaves from other trees sticking in all, these are just like sticking in from the edge of the photograph. And while it's an interesting photo, it doesn't make a good painting because it looks, if I were to paint those palm fronds like that, it would look like I was copying a photo. And I don't want it to look like that. So I'm going to eliminate all of these extra fronds that are coming from other trees that we can't see. And I want to make the one big palm tree, which is a coconut palm tree, the star. So I'm going to eliminate these excess ones, make this the star. And then when I look down here, I see a lot of clutter. In fact, if you look close enough, you even see caution tape. Now, I don't know what that was all about, but I certainly don't want to add that in my painting or the fence. Um, it would might be interesting to add the little building, but I'll save that for another painting. So I'm going to simplify all of the clutter at the bottom because the star of the show is going to be the one big palm tree. So I want to keep that in mind. And that's what I did on my little plan is I kept the palm tree one dark value 
and I'm going to make all the rest of the stuff a middle or middle dark value and the sky will be the light value. So I'm going to use three values to start this painting or to do the underpainting. And really basically that is the extent of my plan for this painting. Now I can go in and get started. Oh, another thing. When I'm making a plan for a painting, one of the things I like to do is pick out the pastels that I'm going to use. I'm going to use this box of Terry Ludwig pastels. These are the um, Red Rock Collection. So you're thinking, well, Red Rock Collection for palm tree? Well, there's some really great colors and values in this set. And I, and I looked at it and I said, hey, I think this might work. And we'll, we'll see how... how uh, if I need to add anything, I may need to go into my big box and add, but I think it'll give me a good start. And it'll help me keep a limited palette so I don't have too many choices, because that can be overwhelming. I went ahead and I did my drawing. I'm using a piece of UART sanded paper. I think it's probably 500 grit. And I did my drawing and I simply used a pencil. And it is okay to use a pencil. Pastel does not, uh, it's not bothered by the pencil. Um, so it's fine to uh, do your drawing in pencil. And sometimes I'll do pencil and sometimes I'll just use a pastel pencil or a sharpened harder pastel, whatever I happen to have handy. So I just did a, a basic simplified drawing and it's really just a road map for me so I know what I want to do with it. The next step in the painting process is to choose how to start that painting or the underpainting. Now for the underpainting I could do a wet underpainting because I have sanded paper. I could do a dry underpainting. I could use any kind of media. But I want to keep it simple today. So I'm going to use one of my go-to starts, I call it, <clears throat> simple starts. And I'm going to use one, <coughs> excuse me. What well, I ha getting over a cough. <coughs> Wait a minute. I might have to edit this. Let me take a drink. I want to use one color family and three values of that color family. So I want to use a dark, a middle, and a light value. And I selected already a kind of peachy orange. Uh, pastel for this. So I've got a middle value, a light value, and a dark value. So it's the same color family, it's just a variety of values in that color family. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pastels and I'm going to block in according to my thumbnail. Now in my thumbnail it all looks the same dark value, but I know that this is going to be darker than this. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and block it in and I want to use a fairly light touch. I don't want to fill in the tooth of the paper too quickly. One thing I want to talk about with painting palm trees or, or uh, the palm fronds is that I don't, I'm not going to paint each individual blade on the palm tree. I'm going to start them out as big shapes and then I'm going to carve into those shapes with the um, color of the sky. So it's going to look a lot more painterly that way than if I went ahead and did like this. We think, you would think, oh, the palm frond, that should be easy. We're just going to make a collection of lines. But what actually is more effective <laughs> is if I make one big shape and then I come in with my sky color and I carve into that shape. And as this painting develops, you'll see what I mean by that. Alright, so there's my dark value. And now I'm going to... <coughs> do a middle dark value for the stuff that's on the ground. And there are some palm trees in the distance that are sticking up that I want to have in the scene. But remember, I don't want the what those palm ones that are coming off the that were coming up from off the page. So there's my middle value. And then I need the light value for the sky. So this is just a lighter version of the same color family, which is kind of a peachy, salmon-y color, I guess you could call it. Right, and so there you have the block-in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it one step further 
and I'm going to blend in this very first layer. And if you've seen any of my video demos before, then you know that I like to blend in the first layer only, and then I don't blend anymore. And the reason why I'm blending in this first layer is because I want to get rid of the light parts of the paper. Oops. Because where it peeks through in, uh, in the painting, it tends to be distracting. Now, I want to keep in mind that this is a coconut palm, and a coconut palm has a very uh, unique and uh, hmm, kind of gestural type curve to its trunk. It's not straight up and down. So I, I, I caught myself making it a little too straight up and down, so I corrected that. Now look at how I'm using the blending tool, which by the way is a peep of piece of pipe insulation foam and I'm using it by pulling it down and sort of painting with it actually. I want to get that effect of the palm fronds and the, and the gentle breezes before I even do any more on the painting itself. All right. So now we have the block in finished. I'm going to put these guys away. And you can see now I have a nice, uh, I'm going to do one more thing before I put it away. I'm going to ground this trunk just a little bit. So I'm going to darken this foreground area. If I didn't darken it, what might end up happening is it'll look like that tree is floating. So I'm going to make it just a little bit darker using that darker value. And already it looks much more grounded. All right, so now I'm ready to go and start adding the other layers. So. I always want to begin with the dark, so I'm going to reinforce the dark values in the tree and in, in, in the uh, foreground area, and then I'll move on from there. And I want to start off, the trunk in the photograph looks very light, but I know it's an upright plane, so it's not it's going to be light, but I want to actually start it a little bit darker so that there's something to respond to. So I'm actually going to come in with a dark violet. And I'm going to add some of this dark violet up in the dark areas of the both the tree and the fronds. Now, one thing I want to point out about the palm fronds in this palm tree and many palm trees is they don't start off, they don't begin right directly from the, the top of the tree. And there's usually a crown and then they come, the, the fronds themselves have a little bit of a branch and then they come off the branch. So let me see if I can show you on the side of the painting. On the, um, I'll just move this for a second so you can see. All right, so here's the trunk. And a lot of times what we end up doing, I don't know if you can see that, I'm going to make it lighter. A lot of times what we end up doing is making our fronds come right off the top of the, the trunk, like this. And I call these fireworks. And they just don't look as natural as if you start the trunk, and then you have the crown here, and then you have the branches, and then you have the fronds. So there's actually a lot more air in between the actual blades on the palm frond, or leaves, the individual leaves. There's a lot more air because of the branches are a little bit more extended. So don't have your, your fronds start directly from the trunk. Try to give them a little air. And I needed to do a little bit more of that on mine, so I will make that adjustment. So there's one layer of dark. I'm going to put my photograph back. But if you know me by now, you know that I rarely look at the photo once I get started with the painting. It's, it's there as a reminder, but I don't use it all that much. Now I'm going to add a dark... Another dark, and this is just a, a dark reddish color. And basically, I can I can use any dark that I want, and it'll read as the palm frond if I get the values in the right place. But I want to have a variety of colors before I go directly to the green. Another thing that's important to note in the palm trees 
is that a lot of times there's various, they, the, the fronds are in various stages of development. So there could be some dead ones, there could be some yellowed ones and some orangey ones because they're not all in the green stage, if you will. So by adding this orange, and I'm adding the orange right now, I'm kind of um, getting a head start on a feeling of some of this, um, the dead stuff that's underneath the tree, underneath, it kind of worked into the tree itself. All right, I'm still not going to use green. I'm going to do one more thing, and I'm going to see, ask myself if there's any area that is darker than anything else. And I think that this area right near the crown is is darker than anywhere else. So I'm going to darken it with a dark. What is this one? It's not. It's not the eggplant, Terry Ludwig, but it's fairly. It's a fairly dark purplish brown. And I'm going to use it also on the shaded side of the trunk. So I want this trunk to feel round, so I have to adjust the values so I can get that feeling of roundedness. And I'm also putting the pastel on its side and kind of wrapping it around so my marks kind of wrap around to get that roundness of the trunk. And I'm going to throw a little bit in this foreground area. Again, the idea being to, to ground the, the tree a little bit more. All right, now I think it's safe to move on and add some green because after all this is a tree and it has green foliage, so I'm going to start off with a dark green. The idea being dark to light, dark to light. So I'm starting off with the darkest green that I have and I'm pulling my, I'm using the pastel on its side and I'm pulling my marks out in big wide marks. Again, I'm not painting any single blades of palm frond or leaves. I don't know the technical, I'm sure there's a technical term. Yet. I will, but not yet. So I've got the dark, a little bit of dark green down here in the foreground area. And now what I want to do is I'm going to have to come in here with the sky color and carve these, uh, the fronds and make them a little more interesting. But I think what I want to do is develop some of this background stuff first. That way I'll know how far to bring down the sky. And because it's in the background, I want to create a, a believable feeling of um, depth. So I'm going to use a cooler blue, and I'm not going to use detail. So I'm just simply creating just light marks so that it looks like there's stuff back there. I'm even making some uh, palm frond-like marks. So we can say, oh, hey, there's trees in the distance, but I don't need to have a lot of detail back there because I can't really see what's going on. It's too far back. Here's another uh, cool blue-green that I can just add to get a little more variety to the mass. But a, lot, a little more variety without de a lot of busy detail. And I think that might be enough. And I've not covered up that underpainting color. And that's on purpose, because I want this color to kind of harmonize the whole painting together. All right, I'm going to add a little bit more of um, some, some brighter greens, <clears throat> or lighter greens, if you will. And then I'm going to start carving. So again, I'm not painting single blades. I'm painting in wide marks with my pastel on its side. And I'm noticing in my photo, and it's something that I want to address right now, that there's a really neat yellowish kind of vein going through each um, frond. So I'm, I think you know, while I see it, I'm going to go ahead and put it in now. Because sometimes you see these things and you're like, oh, well, I'm going to do that, and then you forget. So sometimes I'll, if I see something that I know I want to incorporate into my painting, I'll go ahead and put it in before I forget. All right. Okay. 
Now I need to go ahead and do some carving. And this is where you're going to really see the, the tree come alive. So I'm going to take my sky color and I'm going to just simply, starting with a darker, cooler blue, higher up in the sky. And I'm going to change that blue as I get lower. But here is a good example of what I'm going to do. I'm going to just nip in there and pull out some of those fronds by negative painting. Negative painting meaning I'm going to take what's behind the tree, which is the sky, and I'm going to pull it and carve with it. So here's a good example. See this frond right here? I'm going to go in with my sky color, my blue sky color, and I'm going to make some marks that carve into that palm frond shape. And I'm going to get a little bit lighter as I come lower. Oh no, that's not, that's not, that's, that's a, I call it a dirty blue. It's not very bright and cheerful. So here you can see I'm going to carve this palm frond shape with my sky color. And I'm going to carve this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do actually a, a, uh, combination. So I'm going to go in now on top with some other greens that I see in the tree and I'm going to make a few linear marks on top of the carving that I already did. So a few linear marks on top of the carving. So it's a combination of negative painting and making some linear marks. Negative painting and making some linear marks. And I'll, I'll go back and forth with some other greens but basically you can see that I made one big shape, I carve it with the color behind it, and then I pull out some linear marks. And then what I will want to do is also add light to the trunk, because remember we talked about the trunk was much lighter. So I'm going to go ahead with a lighter value of that peachy orange. And one tip that I gave uh, in my post was if you want to create the feeling of warm sunlight on a tree trunk, don't go lighter in your value, but rather go warmer and more intense. So I'm using a, a nice peach color on the side of the trunk rather than, it looks almost white in the photograph, but by using the warmer peach, you really get a feeling of warm sunlight. If I used a very pale value, it would just look washed out. So I'm going to stop at this point right now the idea is I wanted to show you how I start to carve out those palm fronds and I'm going to work on this a little bit more and I'll and I will show you more in more detail. Hey everyone I'm back. I took a break and I, I, I went away from the painting and came back to it so that I could come back to it with some fresh eyes and I want to work on it a little bit more. So usually I end the, uh, the video so that you can't see those finishing marks and I don't know how far I'm going to take it because I don't want the video to go too long. So I'm going to work on it a little bit more, but I'm not going to talk quite as much. And so I just want you to watch my marks and, and I'll talk, I will, um, in the comments, talk about what I did to finish the painting. So here I go. I'm going to go back to the painting and I picked up a dark blue new pastel because I, I feel like I need to darken the values a little bit, make some of the darker values a little bit stronger. So that dark blue new pastel does the trick nicely to kind of intensify some of the darker areas. So I'm going to do add a little bit here and there. And I want to <clears throat> work on adding some more variety to the greens. And this set is nice because it's got a really nice variety of greens for it being, you think, oh, red rocks. Probably not very many greens in there, but there's some really, really nice greens in this set. So again, I'm making, I'm pulling out some, <coughs> some linear marks on top of the, um, carved areas that I created with the negative painting. So developing the palm fronds, I might even come in here and try to use a 
harder new pesto to give um, some of the really fine frond leaves. But again, you want a variety in your linear marks. If they all look the same, <coughs> it's not going to be very interesting. <coughs> I need to come in now. <coughs> Excuse me. And carve away at some of the... Um, the distant shapes that I put in. I didn't bring my sky down low enough, so I need to do that right now and break that up a little. I put a little, you see I put a little sky hole in this area just so that that's just not one big solid shape. So I'm adjusting the distant shape. And again, I don't want to cover up all of the underpainting color because the underpainting color is what peeks through and makes it more interesting. <clears throat> need a little bit more negative car space in here so I'm slowing down remember when we talked about sky holes what are the, the, the S's of sky holes slow squint and be sensitive so I have to slow down so while mo the, most of the painting went pretty quickly I really have to slow down when it comes to carving and doing the sky holes the other thing that I really liked about this particular tree is that it had some coconuts in it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to make a few suggestions of those coconut shapes without getting too fussy with them. I don't want them to look too cartoony. So I'm just kind of hinting at some of those shapes up in the crown area of the tree. Um, I think I might go a little bit lighter. On the edge of the tree just to give it a little bit more feeling of some sunlight. There we go. But that's still a warm color. And I feel like I could do a little bit more with the foreground. Remember I didn't want it to be too um, too much. And remember this this um, painting is really about the, the palm tree and not the foreground and sometimes it's really easy for us to, to get carried away by other things and we think oh we need more here we need more detail here and really we don't so what I want to show you is I'm just making a collection of marks and this is a warmer green value just to hint at some of the foliage that might be down here at the base of the tree without getting carried away and painting too many things. I'm just making marks, little marks, to suggest maybe there's some foliage down here in front of this tree. And I also remember the idea is we want to move the viewer's eye around a painting, so we do this by creating areas of contrast. So now, in the end part of the painting, I want to cre start creating areas of contrast so that the eye will follow. So I put some brighter orange up in the tree. Hopefully <clears throat> your eye will go up there to look and to explore. Um, I think I can have some darker values in um, the underneath part of those palm fronds. And again, that's contrast. Darken that just a little bit without getting too fussy. We have to sometimes remind ourselves that less is more. I'm going to add a little bit more violet to the trunk because I see some some purple in the, the that tree trunk. And I'm realizing that <clears throat> my trunk is getting a little too thick. Remember, trunks get narrower as they go up towards the top of the tree. So I'm taking my sky color and I'm carving that tree trunk so that it starts to uh, taper. It was kind of too thick. So I made that as a make that correction. And then I just lost my dark, so I'm going to re-establish the dark shadow side of the tree trunk. And 
I think I can add a little bit more of those orange. <clears throat> I really like how some of these fronds have some real orangey, yellowy um, colors to them. So I'm going to put some of those in. And I'm using a new pastel because I can get a finer line. But I'm having to press a little bit harder with that. But these are the finishing marks that I'm making in the, in the tree. So just some finishing marks. I can adjust the sky a little bit here. And I don't feel like I like the way this dark sky leads into the light sky. It's not a very good transition. <clears throat> so I really need to find something that's in between the lightest and the darkest. So something that in between that can knit those two areas together a little bit better. And I'll just bring that color up a little bit higher. And that does better. And I think I'm going to um, warm up the horizon just a little bit by using a a pale yellow but I think a pale peach would do a little bit better. So I'm going to put a pale peach down here at this horizon area just to give it a little bit more of a kind of peachy glow in the sky. And I'm going to take that blue sky color and knit it together a little bit more. So a lot of times it's about going back and forth between the colors that you add. Very rarely do I get it right on the very first time and I think that's a, a important for you guys to know that you know it doesn't always come together the first time you go you, you paint something. Sometimes you've got to go back and forth, back and forth until it comes out. But I think I'm really at a good stopping point now. I don't think that there's going to be too much, if anything, that I'm going to do to this. But it does require that I step away from it again for a few minutes. And I will post the finished painting on the comment section of this video. But I hope you found this helpful, that it's going to help you with your palm trees, or really any trees that you want to do. So simplify, make a plan, do some carving, and I think that's going to really help your trees. So thanks for tuning in.